Jillian Turner joins us live at the White House. Jillian, what's the latest? Well, good morning, guys. Calls from within the president's own party for him to bow out of the race now escalated over the weekend, despite, as Guy mentioned, the president pleading his case on ABC News Friday, then going on to host a whole slurry of campaign events throughout the weekend. It looks like Biden does not have a whole lot to look forward to as House Democrats come back to Capitol Hill this morning. One of them telling Axios News overnight, quote, the expletive is going to hit the fan Monday when Congress returns. People are scared about their own races, but they're also worried about the country and about democracy. Former Democrats privately called for Biden to bow out during a listening session with leader Hakeem Jeffries. Senate Democrats plan to take up the same issue tomorrow during their weekly policy lunch. The president, though, doesn't really outwardly anyway seem bothered by any of it. Biden's got a big week. The NATO summit begins here in Washington tomorrow. Heads of state and government from around the world will all converge here, giving the White House a perfect opportunity to turn attention away from Biden's age and frailty. New documents released by Axios reveal the White House advance team has been giving the president step-by-step -step directions to get from the curtain backstage to the podium at speaking events. The news coming in the wake of the president sometimes appearing confused on stage. I did events in North Carolina. I did events in, in, in Georgia. I did events like this today. Large crowds, overwhelming response, no, no, no slipping. And so I just had a bad night. I don't know why. Well, as we talked about uh, last hour, the president's going to hold this very high stakes solo press conference on Thursday after NATO wraps up. He's then going to travel around the country for the rest of the week into next headlining uh, key fundraisers for him. Today, don't know if we're going to have eyes on the president yet. He's here at the White House, but the only thing on his schedule, his public schedule anyway, is his daily intelligence briefing this morning. Back to you guys. All right, Jillian, North Lawn, thank you very much. It'll be all eyes on the president on Thursday with that press conference because he has not had a solo press conference, with the exception of when he travels abroad, since November of 2022. And now... Suddenly, the White House press corps has got great curiosity about whether or not he's up to the job. Because, as, as she was just talking about, there are a number of Democrats who, in public, are saying that uh, he can't do it. The New York Times yesterday had a great interview with somebody who apparently is at the White House right now, a senior official who has worked with Joe Biden since he was vice president, and uh, says, essentially... He cannot beat Donald Trump. This guy is not the old guy, and this guy would lose. Well, after the debate, then he had that interview with George on Friday. That made a lot of news over the weekend, and George really hammered him about, hey, why, why'd you do so poorly? And at one point he said, I don't know. Then another point he said he was exhausted, and George said, we had 11 to 12 days off. Why wasn't that enough time? You were hunkered down at, at yeah. Camp David. Then he sa said it was a bad episode. Then he said, I was sick, and I was feeling terrible. I just... Uh, it was really bad, okay? And then we find out after that he's adding events to his schedule. So next week when we're all at the RNC, he's added on Monday he'll be in Texas, then Nevada. On Tuesday he's going to speak at the NAACP National Convention. And on Wednesday he's going to speak to Unidos U.S. And then in addition to that... He was at that church in Philadelphia, and he thanked the people for getting him across the line when he won the Senate race mm. in Delaware. Totally different state. So Philadelphia didn't help him get over the line in Delaware when he ran for Senate. But today, light schedule. How long have we been talking about his light schedules? His long weekends constantly at the beach in Rehoboth. The early lids that they call at the White House. This has been going on for years. We put the graphic up during Jillian's report of those cue cards mm -hmm. showing him where a podium is on the stage. And there's people in the media and in the Democratic Party saying, oh, my gosh, what a concerning thing. We're shocked. Right. I'm not shocked. No one should be shocked, at least who watches this network and this show. Remember the cue cards that told him, you take your seat, right? Step-by-step right. -step instructions. That was, what, months ago, maybe over a year ago. These are things that have been in plain sight for some right. time, and a lot of people did a lot of lying, and it's blowing up in their him, faces. But they couldn't protect him at the debate. Exactly right. Well, and the problem is he would he would follow those instructions, walk to the podium, follow that red carpet, walk to the podium over there, and then he would read. 
And that's one of the things about during the debate, he didn't know his own policy because he'd just been reading it for so long. Yeah. However, when he sat down with George Stephanopoulos, people were thinking, okay, this is going to be big. He's probably going to talk to him for an hour or maybe 90 minutes. It was 22 minutes. That was it. George asked some great questions. Uh, the president's answers, mm, not so much. Watch. You came home from Europe about 11 or 12 days before the debate, spent six days in Camp David. Why wasn't that enough rest time, enough recovery time? Because I was sick. I was feeling terrible. 50 million Americans watched that debate. It seemed to confirm fears they already had. Well, look, after that debate, I did 10 major events in a row, including until 2 o'clock in the morning after that debate. I did events in North Carolina. I did events in, in, in Georgia. I did events like this today, large crowds, overwhelming response, no, no, no slipping. And so I just had a bad night. I don't know why. Have you had the specific cognitive tests? And have you had a neurologist, a specialist, do an examination? No, no one said I had to. No one said they said I'm good. Do you have the mental and physical capacity to do it for another four years? I believe so. I wouldn't be running if I didn't think I would did. Look, I'm running again because I think I understand best what has to be done to take this nation to a completely new, new level. We're on our way. But are you being with honest with yourself as well about your ability to defeat Donald Trump right now? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If his people only agreed to a 22-minute interview, and I'm sure they were behind the camera saying, okay, time, time. They probably wanted five minutes. <laughs> probably. But when you agree to that, he could have easily filibustered. He could have answered one question about the debate and then talked about everything that he had done well mm -hmm. and just talk and talk and talk. No, it was quick. And, then, and run the time clock. But he didn't. He was just like the debate. Mm -hmm. They would say, sir, you have 80-something seconds left. Sir, you have 60 seconds left. And right. just like the debate, he gave quick answers when he could have filibustered that time. But uh, he just, they focused the entire interview on his mental capacity. The thing is, in Wisconsin, which is where the rally was on Friday, he said, Biden did, just outright, I am not leaving the race. I'm sticking right. here. And the crowd went crazy for him. So that's some of the feedback that he's getting. I've seen some folks asking, oh, well, Biden gave an interview. Where's Trump? Well, Trump's been laying low, letting all this play out, which makes a lot of sense to me. But we will see him tonight. Our own Sean Hannity has an exclusive interview with the former president that is this evening in the 9 p.m. hour right here on Fox News Channel. And we'll get the first major, I think, first on-camera response from right. the former president to all of what's going on in the opposite right. party. This will be fascinating. Must watch tonight. Uh, one of those questions that George asked about was uh, to the president was, uh, have you taken a cognitive test? And he goes, no, well, why should I? Every day is a cognitive test. The Washington, uh, rather, the New York Post over the weekend had uh, quite an exclusive. They looked at the visitor's logs to the White House, and yes. a top Washington so. neurologist had a meeting with President Biden's personal doctor at the White House earlier this year. Gee, I wonder what they were talking about. Yeah, um, if you were seeing your loved one decline like this, wouldn't you know what's call happening in an expert. what do you call an expert a doctor and if they have will that ever be public to us if he's had an mri like dr siegel said that would tell so much whether mm -hmm. or not he, dr siegel said he does trust president biden's doctor when his doctor says and signed off that he doesn't have parkinson's but does he have early signs of dementia right and you know i'm sure if they called the president's doctor in and they're going to the republicans are all he's got to do is say oh because of hipaa i can't talk about right, that but then it'll be like, why don't you talk to this guy about? It? Well, I can't talk about that either. So those would be the results of a cognitive test, perhaps. The only other metric we've got are the public opinion polls. Nobody knows the polls better than Nate Silver uh, from 538. And he, on his blog last night, essentially was saying, I'm, these are my words, but he was one of the first ones to say his age is a big factor. And right now, uh, Nate, in this post that we're about to highlight, uh, said that Donald Trump has a 70% chance of winning, given uh, uh, the current president's age and cognition, which is should terrify every Democrat. If it's all about saving democracy so Donald Trump can't win, 
Joe Biden's going to lose to Donald Trump. Well, Nate Silver said the coverage before was clearly inadequate, and it centered too much on the electoral implications and not the even more fundamental question of Biden's fitness for office. The critics didn't change the underlying reality. They only made the media seem out of touch. The Democratic Party now finds itself in a state of crisis because they have one more month until the DNC. So what do they do? If he decides to drop out, they have to put Kamala in because that would make women upset if they didn't. That would make the African-American community upset if they didn't. So if she gets in, what do the polls say? The polls have Donald Trump winning against Joe Biden and Kamala Harris mm -hmm. right now. They have a month left before the DNC. Whoa. So at the very end, because they ignored, 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 covered up, covered up, made excuses for him, then we see that debate. The public sees what happened. Now that leaves them a limited amount of time to make a decision and this is clearly the most important office in our country and they've waited to the last minute to pick a candidate and that's the key the cover-up right with all due respect to Nate Silver this was not inadequate coverage it was deceitful coverage protecting Joe Biden and then that all blew up let's just remind folks this is in the last couple of months what the media was spoon-feeding their viewers their audience about Joe Biden watch this He's very lucid, well, very well informed. He speaks uh, quietly and a little bit slowly, but, you know. We've spent way too much time talking about this president's age. And I'll say it again. When Ronald Reagan was the oldest person to ever be in the White House and to run for re-election, I don't recall a lot of people within his own party talking about the fact that we need to get another person. He's too old. He's totally focused. He's very sharp. And the, the proof is in the performance. But comparing that guy's mental state, I've said it for years now, he's cogent. Mm -hmm. But I undersold him when I said he was cogent. He's far beyond cogent. In fact, I think he's better than he's ever been intellectually, um, analytically. One of the themes this election cycle is that Joe Biden is too old to lead. And so everyone is seizing upon this. And it is a classic disinformation tactic. There's a growing and insidious trend in right-wing media, broadcast, print, and social media. It is to take highly misleading and selectively edited videos of President Biden directly from Republican National Committee social media accounts and then use those videos to spread messages virally to cast doubt on President Biden's fitness for office. So if you noticed, uh, the sound bites started uh, back in February. What happened in February? Oh, yeah, that's when uh, Mr. Hur, the special prosecutor, looking into whether or not to charge Joe Biden, said, I'm not going to charge him because he's a sympathetic, sympathetic character, because he's an elderly man with a really lousy memory. And it was after that passage in his brief where suddenly you had people on the political left doing just what we saw right there, where they said, hey, he might say that, that's unfair, because behind the scenes, Joe Biden is sharp as a tack, sharp as a tack. I heard that 50 times for, in different ways. And you know what? Turns out, probably just spin. Well, and then we had video of Biden at the G7, seeming to maybe wander in a direction with the other leaders saying, let's go get him. We were told, Psst. cheap fake, not true. Barack Obama grasping him by the wrist and leading him off stage. Yeah. Cheap fake, not true. One after another, lying to our faces, and then when it all just exploded undeniably in front of 50 to 70 million people, depending on the metric you look at, they're like, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. The whole Potemkin village that they'd been setting up, telling us not to believe our ears or eyes, it came crumbling down, and now they are stuck in this dilemma of their own making, and all of the agita and all of the concern is so richly deserved. Well, and Fox has been talking about this for four years. I mean, Dr. Right. Siegel was on in 2020 with Sean Hannity talking about his cognitive decline. And then it's not just about his... It, you know, you, you see some of these falls, you see him fall off the bike, you see him fall on the stage, you feel sorry for him. You hope he doesn't fall off on the cement stairs, I think when he was in China, falling off the stairs in, on Air Force One. Um, it's hard to watch that. But think about what other world leaders are thinking about. This guy is weak, he's fragile, this is the time where we can do whatever we want. We saw Russia invade. We see what's happening with Taiwan. They send the spy missile or the spy balloon across our country. We do nothing about it. You have open borders, people coming in, and you hear them on the border wearing 
wearing Biden t-shirts saying this is the time to come. This is the time to come. Our country is, is it's in a dangerous situation. So this is extremely serious. But they've just waited to the last minute mm -hmm. to actually acknowledge this and be honest. Is Joe Biden going to be, I mean, he announced he's going to bed early now. Is he going to be able to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning if we get a call that there the is a, phone there call is a decision that has to be made? I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.